Welcome to Organic Chemistry 1. Um, before we start doing the IR lab, we're actually going to talk about lab safety a little bit first. Uh, so the first part of lab safety is like lab fashion, what you can and cannot wear in the laboratory. Um, so probably the most important piece of the safety equipment in the lab is actually your goggles. You're probably familiar with these from general chemistry. Um, your laboratory goggles must adhere completely to your face, and they must seal like at the top and the bottom and all the way, all the way around the sides. Make sure you're getting goggles that are specifically designed for chemicals to be chemically resistant and not just shock goggles. Your chemical goggles are also like shock resistant, like if glass or breaks like towards your eye, it will stop it. Um, but not all shock goggles um, are like sealed at the top because if you spill like chemical like on your forehead or something, you have to make sure that it doesn't like run down into your eyes. Sorry, I had to adjust my mask there. Okay. Uh, the next piece of laboratory equipment is the coats. So make sure you're buying a lab coat. You get one of these beautiful white lab coats that come in different colors. You can tie dye them, whatever. Um, if you haven't bought one yet, I strongly recommend you get a lab coat with like tapered sleeves so you don't like knock over glass curves easily. And then also I recommend getting snaps so you can take it off as quickly as possible if it does like light on fire or if you get chemicals on it. Um, but those are not required. A regular like button up lab coat with like normal sleeves is totally fine too. Next, gloves. There are several glove stations in all the laboratories. For example, there's one right over here. They have a variety of sizes, so make sure you have um, like a size of gloves that fits your hands really well. Um, gloves must be worn whenever you're working with chemicals. So whenever you're in a hood or you're like carrying reagents around in the lab, uh, make sure you have gloves in your hands. Gloves do not belong in any of the common or like civilian spaces in the lab. They should never touch your cell phones. They should never touch your laptops, your backpacks, your like non-lab coats, like regular outer wear things like that. Gloves should absolutely never touch your hair or your face um, because we assume once you have gloves in your hands that they are covered in chemicals. Even if you just put on a fresh pair, make sure um, that they, you're not touching anything with gloved hands off. Um, really commonly we see students like walk out the door to the NMR room and they're touching like your hands with their gloves on. Make sure you have your gloves off. You can even do it like one glove on, one glove off style. So you have one hand on the doorknob and one hand like holding whatever it is that you're carrying down the hallway. Okay, next, pants. Um, please wear pants. That's just good policy in general. But specifically in lab, make sure that you're not wearing shorts or you're not wearing leggings, okay? So any sort of pant that is like form-fitting to your leg are not allowed in lab. So if you're like me and you bike to work and you have leggings on, I recommend you get a pair of scrubs like these. Um, they're great because they're just loose-fitting and so you can just pull them up over your leggings. You don't even have to change. Um, we really just don't want you wearing leggings in the lab because if you splash them on your legs, it will actually just trap the chemical against your skin and it's like, it takes longer to get them off. Um, and most synthetic leggings, if they like, lay on fire, instead of burning cleanly, they will actually just melt and adhere to your skin, which really sucks and it's very painful. Uh, make sure if you have long hair, you bring it up in a ponytail or a bun. Um, I strongly recommend, and I actually have my students do blonde to wear it up in a bun, um, because then if you're like leaning down, you're not brushing your ponytail against the countertops, and you're not tempted to like touch your hair with a gloved hand to like brush it majestically out of it. Uh, make sure that you're always wearing clothes, touch shoes, and lab. Okay, so no clogs, no sandals, none of this sock and sandal business. That's just not good lab policy. It's just not good life policy. So make sure you're wearing clothes, touch shoes that cover your heel, that cover your toe, and like lace up. They're not like flopping around or anything like that. Um, if you see any toes, you gotta go. Also, because we are in the time of pandemic, you need to make sure we're wearing masks. This is true anywhere on campus. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. You must cover your nose and your mouth. You secure to your face and behind your ears, things like that. Great, so that covers lab fashion. So now let's talk about the forbidden items, things that we don't want you to have in lab under any circumstances. The first one is food and drink. If you need to bring food and drink to lab um, because we have a snack during the three hour lab period, it's totally fine. But make sure it's sealed and it stays in your lockers the entire time. It cannot be on any of these like civilian bench spaces in the lab. These right here, they also absolutely cannot, under any circumstances, go into the hood. If we see food on the benches or in the hoods, we have to throw it away. You cannot eat it. Alright? Next thing is gum. Please don't be chewing gum in the lab. It can actually kind of pick up some of the volatile compounds that work with in organic chemistry. Um, so spit out your gum before you commit. Cigars, cigarettes, e cigarettes, none of those things are allowed, right? So if they, especially if they have a flame, they can you know, cause an explosion. Um, we also just don't want things like anywhere near your mouth while you're in lab. Um, so this is sort of strange, but it's also headphones. We can't allow headphones in lab. Um, we want to make sure that you can hear your TA, you can hear any alarms, you can hear any announcements. Um, so you can't be playing music over headphones, even music, unfortunately, like over your like, normal phones projected to the whole class. You cannot allow. If you want to have a group sing along, ask your TA. Maybe you can pick up some Disney tapes. All right, finally, let's talk a little bit about emergency protocols. In the case of a small fire, um, you can flag your TA, ask them to come over, and they might be able to put it out pretty quickly. If you're not 
sure, or if, you're, if it's a large fire, um, immediately turn off all the hot plates. Just walk around and unplug them so your TA can see, like, from the doorway that all the hot plates are turned off. And then immediately evacuate the building. If we do evacuate, you're going to go outside in front of the Northern Library, so on Northern Quad, at least 500 feet away from the building, and stay in a little group there and wait for your TA to come. If the fire turns out to be small, it can be put up easily. Um, you can actually go back into the lab and finish your experiments so if nothing had happened. If you leave during a fire emergency or a fire drill, um, and the rest of your class gets to come back in during the experiment and you're gone, um, that's a problem because then you're going to be like marked absent for the rest of that lab, which would really stink. And also your TA is going to be very worried that you're burning alive in the building. So please wait for your TA outside if there's a fire and come to back to it. Next, chemical spills. Um, first, alert your TA, let them know what you spilled, where you spilled it, approximately how much. They'll probably get up, take a look at it, and they'll help you clean it up. Um, in a lot of cases, we can just put paper towel all over the spill, and then put the paper towel from the back of the hood to like, evaporate it off. Um, if it's a larger spill, your TA might have to evacuate the area. Um, you get like an actual like, crew and crew to clean it up to make sure everything's safe, but we don't anticipate any of those. Be very careful with chemicals anyway. Um, and then we're going to talk about the eyewash, showers, and sinks. So if you do spill a large quantity of chemicals on yourself, or if you spill just like a little bit of a very hazardous chemical, you will need to rinse it off under a sink that's like on an extremity that can get under a sink, or if it's like in your hair or something, you can the shower, if it's in your eyes, you can the eyewash. Um, you have to stay, like rinse it off for about 15 minutes. We'll look, check those out in just a second. Finally, if you break any glass, um, it's not a big deal. They get broken all the time. Uh, just tell your TA, and they'll probably just tell you to like grab a broom and dustpan that lives under the sink and sweep it up, and then you can put all the broken glass into the broken glass containers. So, come with me. We'll look at the showers and the eye wash. So the shower and eye wash are usually um, like right next to each other. If you do get chemicals all over yourself, you're going to stand under the shower like this, and you're going to pull this lever, and about, I think it's about 10 billion gallons of water are going to be dumped on you all at once. So I'm not going to demonstrate how to use that. Um, make sure else if you have chemicals on you, you might need to start like undressing, so taking off your lab coats, your scrubs, um, even lower garments if they're also contaminated. If that's the case, we'll probably have other people in the lab kind of give you some privacy and leave. Um, if you get chemicals in your eyes because you're not wearing your goggles or your goggles break or something like that, you can use the eye wash. So the eye wash um, is pretty easy to use. There's like this little lever here. You go, you stand over here. The water faucet has to go directly into your eyes. And I'm going to turn it on here so you can see what it looks like. It's just like a little fountain. And it also makes a big mess of water all over the floor. Um, but stand there for 15 minutes. Your TA will turn you and make sure you're there for the entire time. Um, then, of course, any of the things can be used for rinse. Okay. Oh, and one more thing. We also have fire extinguishers in the lab. They usually live by the doors, but your TA will point them out to you when you arrive in the lab. Um, so if it's a smaller fire that your you or your TA can put out, you can pull it up, you pull out the pin, squeeze the handle, aim the hose at the bottom of the flame, um, try to extinguish it yourself. If you don't feel comfortable using a fire extinguisher, or if it's like a larger fire, don't use it. That's okay. Just evacuate. Get out of the building, pull the alarm so everybody else can evacuate as 